Hello everyone and welcome back to another exciting episode of MFW Warzone. I'm your host, your MC, your commentator, Roman Empire. We are in the first Warzone straight out of our very first pay-per-view Flashpoint. So things have changed. We have some champions holding belts now. Still got a few to go, but the landscape of MFW has considerably changed. We're about to see how that goes on moving forward. As we kick off here in Alamogordo, New Mexico, for what promises to be a very interesting war zone. We're moving forward, we're trying to get new contenders for those now no longer vacant championships. And we're going to kick off with singles action in the multimedia championship division. There's a certain member of a certain stable who'd like to potentially earn some gold around his waist as well. Why do I say as well? Well, because his partners have recently become the world's finest tag team champions. That means this is his chance to move up in the rankings and hopefully become the multimedia champion. Of course, those of you who were watching Flashpoint know who we're talking about by now. We're talking about the Teen Titans, Cyborg, and Beast Boy. Big win over X-Men First Class to become the world's finest tag team champions. It was a great match between Beast and Iceman and Beast Boy and Cyborg. In the end, Teen Titans successful. And as they accompany Red Robin, Tim Drake, here to the ring, he's going to be taking on another member of the stable they were opposing for those tag team championships. So it'll be an interesting opportunity for the other side as well, attempting to sort of redeem themselves for not picking up that big win. And that title in the process. As they make their way down to the ring. Looking oh so happy to have those belts around their waist. Much like uh, with the tag team title match itself. These two stables going at it are sort of a, a staple of kids Saturday night uh, cartoons right now. Versus what they were in about... Well, my, my childhood, I won't date myself, but the 90s, the early 90s, there was a lot of uh, X-Men cartoons in the morning when you woke up, first thing, right before school, you'd watch, or after, come home from school, I should say. Cyclops, Scott Summers will be in action here tonight of these three men, Beast and Iceman flanking him, obviously involved in that tag team matchup but in the end Cyborg and Beast were the ones who walked out with the titles have to think that probably still sticks in the back of their mind considering the age difference probably a little more embarrassed to have lost to the Titans but there's nothing to be ashamed of two very very capable teams Scott Summers looking to pick up a big win and change the fortunes of his stable here on Warzone. Different techniques for both of these men. One a more high-flying acrobatic style. Scott Summers more of an, a technician by the book. be very interesting to see how they contrast, but both these leaders of their teams going at it. As we kick things off here. Ooh, hung up on the top rope there. That's that experience, that veteran experience of Cyclops. Ooh, big dropkick lands this time. It seems like Tim Drake is now in control. Such a high impact offense from Tim Drake, using a lot of those standing shooting stars and various other acrobatic maneuvers to make up for the fact that he doesn't have a large power game. Oh, job breaking right on the look at the collarbone. Oh, shooting star of his own. Cyclops going for a big maneuver there. Don't often see 
more risky maneuvers, but perhaps he... Oh, Kip up right immediately, but does not pay off. Big whiff on the comeback attempt, only to get stomped. You can see Cyborg there leaning on the apron. Beast Boy right behind him. What's this? Hanging him up on the top rope. Oh! Looked like a boot to the head, maybe a knee. Oh, come on, ref. I, again, I apologize. Our, our rules are a little more lenient to uh, all the individuals uh, of MFW, but we do not condone uh, what, what amounts to cheating. However, this is technically teamwork. They are even, three on three, but come on, ref. Oh, good. Uh, we're going to have to look at the, the legal ramifications in our, our rules. Oh, wait a minute. Beast being ejected. That's right, Beast being ejected for this. In for the pin, but he's delayed this pin for so long. Only a 2.9, just so close. But the delay came because Beast was being ejected for that interference. I'm glad to see that our referee staff here has started to uh, change their approach to how they deal with these particular kinds of interferences. Allowing the match to go on, not depriving the audience of a decisive finish, but still handing down some repercussions to the people who do these sorts of things. So I have to agree with that decision. I'm, I'm glad that Beast was ejected from the ring. Uh, argument could be made for both to be ejected from ringside. However, referee's discretion. Think of it as a three strikes you're out, I suppose. Not that they can pull off such a maneuver with only the two of them now. And I'm sure they'll think twice about interfering. As things spill back into the ring here, it looks more like Cyclops is taking control, though, after that big power bomb. No surprise there. The impact. Oh! Round Robin out of nowhere! Round Robin out of nowhere! One! Two! Three! It's over! It is over. Tim Drake with a big victory out of nowhere. Hitting that round robin. Impressive move. Congratulations to Tim Drake. Big win. Got to think that put, puts him up in the rankings for the multimedia division. Oh, very sportsmanlike. Offering a handshake and a show of respect. This I'm glad to see this, especially after some of the controversial aspects of this match. It's a good thing. These two showing some respect. Great matchup between these two, and we move forward into our women's division. Obviously, we've crowned a new multimedia, excuse me, multiversal women's champion. She's got a strut of stuff. We've got to put her up against some new competition. See if any of them can stake a claim to an, a future title shot by beating her in one-on-one -on -one action. She makes her way with that belt around her waist for the first time. And one of her challengers, we've seen many of the Warzone uh, women's roster already because of the Battle Royal in the very first episode. But we haven't seen them at all in singles action. Other than Wonder Woman and She-Hulk now, uh, as well as the champ, obviously. We haven't seen many in singles action, so this will be a good chance to see their talents showcased. And we're kicking off the champ's new tour, so to speak, with Spider-Gwen. Gwen Stacy, the Spider-Woman from another universe. Looking to pick up a big win here against Captain Marvel, who recently claimed that women's championship over She-Hulk in what was a fantastic match. Both putting it all on the line. It'll be interesting to see what approach Spider-Gwen takes to try and defeat the champion. Obviously similar to the last matchup we saw, it's a disparate styles with one being a high flyer. However, the opponent in this case much more of a powerhouse and capable of an aerial offense as she goes in for a guillotine choke right off the bat. Interesting strategy to go for the choke right off the bat. Maybe go for a quick win with the submission or just wear down your opponent. Now with the more technical back and forth trying to wear down 
the champion and get a feel for what kind of skill she possesses. Wouldn't necessarily say these two are evenly matched. Obviously, there is some power difference between the two. However, the quickness, the reflexes of a spider Gwen are an advantage that she can make use of against a more dominant opponent like Captain Marvel. I'm slipping out from the back here. Hurricane Rana from that standing position, very impressive. And a suplex. Not bad so far from the challenger, the contender. Obviously, it's not a title match. That being said, got to imagine if she picks up a big win, would have to be one of the first in line for a shot. Ooh, kick to the face. Now, ooh, cartwheel into handspring moonsault. One, two, only a two count. Going to the top rope here. Oh, misses big time. Went for the spiral tap. Big maneuver did not pay off. Didn't get all of that clothesline, but she still takes down Spider Gwen. Only a two count. Now stomping away at the downed opponent. And a neck whip. And that's that power difference to talk about. Just so easily tossing Spider Gwen over the top rope. One handed. Now well, they fight it out on the outside here. Ooh, big heel kick. So far, an impressive display, an impressive fight being put up by Spider Gwen. Obviously, this is also a big match for the champion coming straight out of having just won this title. You don't want to suddenly start picking up losses. It puts your title reign into question. It doesn't look good for you moving forward. If that's how you start your championship reign off the gate, popping up. Spider Gwen and tossing her belly first onto the mat. And again. Just toying with Gwen Stacy here. Oh, and tossing her. That tilt a world toss. Striking away, setting her up on that bottom rope. See maneuvers like this before, likely to come in for that running drop kick to the face. Plants it. And things no longer looking good for the challenger, the contender, so to speak. Oh, went for a springboard knee, got brushed off, and the cockiness of Gwen Stacy, but I don't know if I would be this overconfident. Yes, big counter, but at the same time, you want to stay on an opponent as dangerous as Captain Marvel. You don't want to give her too much time to recover. Oh, went for the Pele kick to the back of the head, that cartwheel handspring Pele kick. One, not enough. She's attempted those big moves a couple times. Hasn't been able to pull them off. Always had an answer, has Captain Marvel. As these two battle it out. Ooh, tilt a whirl, head scissors. She's rolled to the outside, but Captain Marvel's already on the top rope. Oh, went for the elbow and missed. Spider Gwen trying to take advantage. Russian light sweep. Oh, but the arm drag here is they're both in the middle of the ring. Ooh, big slap. 
Looks like Marvel calling for it. Calling for the end. Is this going to be it? Elbow drop. Thought maybe she would go for the shooting star, but no. Went for the elbow drop. And now climbing the second rope. I wonder what she's thinking here. But it looks like she's calling for the end with that taunt. Oh! Sunset flip! Into a powerbomb! Sit out! That, that could be it. The impact. Going for the pin. One. Two. Three. That's it. There is your winner, Captain Marvel. Huge high impact sunset flip flip powerbomb to end it very valiant effort by spider gwen but in the end the champion just able to pull out all the big moments when they needed it especially those counters those big reversals of some of those bigger moves that could have ended it in favor of spider gwen right there the spiral tap the first finisher missed example of that We saw, oof, that high impact spine buster right off of the miss of the second attempted move. Didn't go quite as well as she had hoped. Regardless, congratulations to the champ picking up another big win. As she continues her reign in winning fashion. But we have to move on because we've got more matches on the card still to go here in part one of Warzone. And we're kicking it back to our multimedia championship division with the champ himself, Miles Morales, a.k.a. Spider-Man. Picked up that title after a controversial win, we'll call it. It was a fatal four-way match. Shazam, Ant-Man, this man, Spider-Man Miles Morales, and the man he pinned in this strange situation, Iron Man. It seems Shazam was in the middle of some sort of combination, was going to go for something. Uh, got froze, we'll say, uh, for lack of a better term. Ended up frozen in this. I don't really know how to explain it. To be honest, I have no clue how to explain it. But he wasn't uh, he wasn't interfering as Iron Man was pinned by Miles Morales. And uh, many of the participants in that match claiming it was a fluke victory. That Miles Morales should not have the championship. Should not be the first ever multimedia champion. And one of those men is the man he faces tonight. Ant-Man. Ant-Man was not a part of that decision. Was uh, outside the ring after being whipped by Shazam. Knocked into the other two opponents in the corner. Rolled out of the ring. Uh, was not involved in the decision. And says, basically, went out and said in an interview backstage, Miles Morales didn't beat me. I should have a legitimate shot at the championship. So, whoever the powers that be are for Warzone decided, why not? Let's give this guy a shot. Not for the title, but if he wins, he will be a contender for the multimedia championship at the next opportunity available. It doesn't necessarily mean he will have a title match. But if he wins, he will obviously be at the top of the list. That being said, other members of that match also have a claim. Some because they were not pinned. Others because of the strange circumstances. But regardless, trying to earn his way back into the title picture here as these two feel each other out. Again, this will not be for a guaranteed title match moving forward. That has not been assured to Ant-Man should he win. However, if he wins, and if other members of that Fatal 4-Way match who have a claim pick up wins, we may see them face off in the future 
to decide who will face Miles Morales next. Ooh, backbreaker to the base of the neck. As we saw earlier though, Red Robin picked up a big win. So he may have just as much of a claim in this new fledgling title division to a future title shot. Regardless, gotta think that Ant-Man wants to capitalize on the momentum of having beaten Thanos in a huge upset in the first episode of Warzone. And try to keep that momentum going despite the hiccup of the Fatal 4-Way loss. For what it's worth, Iron Man has made no claim to attempting to go after that multimedia championship immediately stomps to the chest he seems to have accepted the pin regardless fluke or not cannot be same cannot be said about ant-man or shazam though shazam we have heard none too pleased with his role and how that match ended Looking to redeem himself before he even comes near the title picture. Slipping out here into another reverse DDT. I mean, with many contenders from that match claiming that Miles Morales' reign is a fluke, you have to think it's a lot of pressure on him to pick up wins and prove otherwise Rebound clothesline. Going in for the pin. One, two, oh, only a one count. But as we were saying, a lot of pressure to pick up a big win to prove them wrong. And if you lose in situations like this, what does that mean? Low downsize, hit it. In for the pin. One, two, oh, only two and a half. Took two of those to fell Thanos. If he hits another one, you gotta imagine it's over, but Morales is gonna wanna pick up a big move here to shift the tide in his favor. Again, does not look good for the champ to pick up a loss after a, a championship victory, but even worse if the conditions were dubious. Lends credence to the idea that you did not earn it if you have difficulties picking up singles victories in a, after a multi-man match that ended in such a way. Hey man, using the ropes here. One, only a one count. Oh, what are we going for here? Oh, it looked like maybe going for a powerbomb reversed into a sunset flip. In for the pin. One, two. Oh, flipped over. Only a one count. to fighting it out in the corner into a sunset flip. Taking a page out of fellow Avengers book, Captain Marvel, in that Warzone Avengers faction. Both of them. No surprise there. Another rebound clothesline. Lariat comes across the chest. This could be it. Referee in for the pin. One, two... Three doesn't kick out this time. Ant-Man picks up a win. Easily propels him towards the top of that contender's list. Backing up his claims. And making the champ's legitimacy that much weaker. This is a crucial victory and a crucial defeat for both of these men in that respect. Ant-Man obviously though an impressive win. Miles Morales is going to be struggling here to try and prove that he deserves to hang on to that title. So next match he has coming up, you got to imagine it's another must-win situation. And if he loses, what does that mean for him moving forward? But regardless, for tonight, we celebrate Ant-Man's victory. We move on. We're going to round off our main events tonight with a bit more women's action from the women's tag team division. Obviously, there was that big women's multi-tag team match. A lot happened in that one. Uh, Fight Night's Storm from Team Extreme of Storm and Rogue was uh, suffered a minor injury. 
we saw she took quite a bit of damage. Uh, one of the other competitors landed on her after taking a big back bump. And then immediately afterwards, high impact move to the outside from Storm. Ill-advised, she will be recovering for a little bit. But uh, regardless, we move on. And the champions will be in action here. A fight night team as well. That's why we bring it up. But being the new Undisputed Women's Tag Team Champions, they get to be here on Warzone to face the tag teams that Warzone has to offer and potentially find some future contenders as Batgirl and Black Canary making their way to the ring here. Those big beautiful belts around their waist. These two obviously have a great deal of competition on both shows to potentially take those titles from them. But they're kicking off their championship run here on Warzone in foreign territory, if you will, the visiting team. And who do they face first? Well, Raven and Starfire. These two members of the Teen Titans obviously would love to get their hands on those belts, especially with the world's finest tag team champions being their, their comrades, Cyborg and Beast Boy. You can imagine if they were to win all four out of five of them with belts. Obviously, Red Robin potentially going after the Multimedia Championship could easily become one of the most decorated stables in MFW. Raven and Starfire looking to kick that off by picking up a win over the champs here tonight in our midpoint main event, we'll call it. I spuriously called it a main event, but that is only because we have our episodes obviously in two parts. And there goes that bell. You'll find out what the actual full Warzone main event is in our next episode, so you guys stay tuned for that one. Once again, I want to thank you all for joining us. Every time you guys come back is such a heartwarming moment for me. So thank you. All the support. Keep watching. Keep loving it. Keep sharing the nerd love. And let us know about it in the comments. Of course, hitting those thumbs up helps too. And if you want to keep up with all these episodes, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Suplex! That's right, don't miss a thing, Suplex. I'm sure Thing has suplexes, so if he's in action, you won't miss any of his Thing suplexes. I need coffee. Um, moving on. Focus on our women's tag team match here. Obviously, this is a very interesting matchup, very different styles. Two vigilantes, more uh, martial base training. Big power slam there. Versus a, a, a deceptive powerhouse in Starfire. She's a lot stronger than people realize. Physically. And the occult... Classic, I guess you'd call her. That's the name of her finisher as well. One of them. Raven. More technically sound. Using submissions and the like. Ooh, big enziguri there to the back of the head. Starfire crumpled in a heap. As Canary's tagged in here. Interesting to see the, the kind of teamwork between both these duos. Thus far, Starfire doing a lot of the work, not going for that tag. Whereas... Black Canary and Batgirl more rotating their positions in the match here. Starfire showing a little bit of uh, ruthlessness here, going for, going for the limbs a lot, striking, 
while she has the advantage. Don't often see that kind of aggression from her, but it's... Oh! Slingshot suplex of Falcon Arrow. And now a standing moonsault. And another... Wearing down Starfire with big, high-impact moves. And now a suplex over the ropes. And thus far, not seeing a lot of urge from Starfire to make the tag. And as I say that, of course, that is when she decides to make the tag. Looks like she knew exactly how much damage she needed to do. Went for the hip attack, landed on that top rope. That top turnbuckle. Did not pay off. Big Hurricane Rana. Black Canary setting up here, but Raven just getting into this matchup. This isn't going to be enough to put her away, even if it hits. Heel kick. Don't know that I, I would advise having gone for that finishing maneuver so early on Raven. If that had been Starfire, that'd be one thing. She took a lot more damage. Ooh, another big heel kick. Wrenching that arm, snapping it back. Both members of the Teen Titans have been working the limbs a lot of their opponents, particularly of Black Canary. Obviously, giving one of her moves is a triangle arm bar. Interesting to note that they went after the arm so much. Now we're seeing the stampede of stomps here. Followed up by a big drop kick. Exceptional teamwork from the Teen Titans. Pin made. Not enough, only a two count. Batgirl not even getting in the ring. Had a lot of faith there that Black Canary would kick out. Ooh, backslide driver. And suddenly Black Canary is alone with no support in the corner. Once again, working the arms. And now that kicking combination. And for the pin. Only a two and a half. Black Canary trying to fight back in this situation, but it's essentially a handicap match until her partner gets back to that apron so she can make a tag. Big boot across the jaw. Can we see another package driver? I thought it was going to be a suplex again, but it went for that small package driver. Oh, tag made! Oh, but still! Went for the elbow drop might have clipped her but didn't clip her in time to stop the tag as Batgirl now attempting to take advantage not sure that was a hell of a gamble going from that top rope during that attempt to make the tag all the way across the ring and now Seen something like this before. Torpedo DDT through the ropes. All of our competitors here on MFW's brands, both so impressive, so athletic. You have to be careful of count outs here, brawling like this on the outside. Oof, toss straight into that LED ring post. Already at a seven count. If they're not careful, they'll get counted out here. Taking it back into the ring as Raven is tagged in. Could we see a... Nope, Gory Driver. Face first, Gory Face Buster. Raven no longer has a partner on the apron. Smart move from the Birds of Prey here to make the tag. 
Could we see the finisher? Bird's eye view. Going in for the pin. This could be it. One. Two. Just barely. 2.5. Maybe, maybe more. Hit with that tag finisher. But again, Raven has not spent nearly as much time in the ring as Starfire. Which could be a key factor of why she was able to kick out of that. If that had been Starfire, I'm fairly certain that would have been the end of this match. That could be a key to their strategy. Middle rope. Nevermore. Nevermore off the middle rope. This could be it. One. Two. Three. Team Titans with a huge win on home turf. Warzone's women's tag team here. Raven and Starfire picking up a win over the undisputed women's tag team champions. Black Canary and Batgirl. In impressive fashion. Both teams on their game tonight. But in the end, Team T Titans pick up the win. Congratulations to both women. It'll be interesting to see how the women's tag team division shapes up in the coming weeks. That being said, gotta think Teen Titans are at the top of the list right now over the other women's tag teams. And everybody's going to be playing catch up to try and get higher on that list. Thank you so much for joining us. Obviously, more to come. Part 2 of Warzone. More matches coming to you. Followed up by the first fight night out of Flashpoint. So much more to share with you guys. Thank you again for joining me, Roman Empire, your host, MC commentator, as you will. All you loyal MFers who come back each and every episode, cannot thank you enough. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, let us know what you think. Let us know what matches you'd like to see moving forward. Give us your opinions. I love hearing them. And hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Thank you once again for joining us. Good night. And congratulations to the Teen Titans.